Tonight, Motorola's got new gear, Mt. Gox implodes, and Apple releases security fixes. Tech News Tonight is next. This is Twit. This is Tech News Tonight, episode 31 for Tuesday, February 25th, 2014. This episode of Tech News Tonight is brought to you by lynda.com. Learn what you want, when you want, with access to over 2,000 high-quality online courses, all for one low monthly price. To try it free for seven days, visit lynda.com slash tn2. That's l-y-n-d-a dot com slash tn2. I'm Sarah Lane. It's Mobile World Congress Week in Barcelona, so let's get right into the latest news. Joining us is Mark Millian, editor of Global Tech at Bloomberg.com. Hello, Mark. Hello, Sarah. So I guess you were up here on Sunday, but now you're virtually with me. So thanks for being part of Twit twice in one week. Thanks for having me here virtually twice in one week. Of course. So Lenovo uh, bought Motorola a few weeks ago in the process of buying Motorola. Uh, but Motorola is still announcing some products. They did it uh, at, at sort of an event at Mobile World Congress. What is new? Uh, yeah, they, they kind of announced new products. Uh, it was a little, it's, it's a little awkward when you're, uh, you're in a position to hold an event when your CEO just left the company and you don't have a replacement and you're about to be bought by a giant Chinese company. But they did have a few products to talk in theory about. Um, the first is a follow-up to the Moto X, their flagship phone. Uh, which wasn't exactly a huge global hit. Uh, it did okay in the U.S. Um, we're expecting that late summer of this year. And they also promised a wearable, a smartwatch of some sort coming this year as well. There were a few smaller things like um, Moto Maker getting your custom phone backs on the Moto X in, in more countries that's coming to Europe and Mexico. Um, and that was more of a made-in-the-U.S. type thing um, that they're finally, uh, they found a way to export overseas. Uh, but it was, uh, it, I wasn't there in person, but it struck me as a fairly awkward press conference. You know, of the few details that we got about the watch, one of the focuses that apparently the watch will have is style because current devices don't have people actually wanting to wear them because they are stylish and look good. Is that a good move for Lenovo? Well, I don't know that Motorola or Lenovo necessarily have a reputation for style anyway. Um, and I would say when you look at what else has been announced at Mobile World Congress, the Samsung um, Galaxy Fit actually looks pretty cool. Um, mm -hmm. And you see other smartwatch makers like the Pebble is... Uh, is they, they've made a big next step um, for a startup in, in the aesthetic area. So... Uh, I wouldn't say that just promising style, at least from a tech company that doesn't have a whole lot of reputation there, is going to move the needle. But we'll have to see what they actually come up with because they didn't show us anything. Speaking of what they're coming up with, a few weeks ago you wrote an article titled, Lenovo isn't buying Motorola's phones, it's buying the brand. Okay, well, Lenovo paid Google $2.91 billion for this brand. What is the brand going forward? I would say that the brand is is especially strong in the U.S. and in Europe in these developed markets um, where Motorola is still seen as uh, as a pioneer in mobile and in in many times in in the recent decade as an innovator. I mean, people still remember getting their first Razer phone and that being the coolest, most cutting edge device. And um, they Motorola did the original Droid in the U.S. and that was a huge hit. Um, and it's it's pretty crazy to think, but Motorola, uh, at least according to the most recent numbers that we looked at, is number three in the U.S. It's a distant third behind Apple and Samsung, but it's still number three. So when you look at all the, the smartphone brands that are out there, that's not a bad pickup for Lenovo. Lenovo itself, which has no presence in the U.S. in phones, is number four globally. Um, so, so Lenovo doesn't really need a phone company um, to build. They're already a phone company. So they bought a brand that'll help them get into the premium market into the U.S. and Europe. All right. Well, thank you so much, Mark, for talking with us. How can people connect with you and learn more about what you've got going on? Yeah, check out uh, Bloomberg.com slash global tech 
for uh, all types of stories about what's going on in technology outside Silicon Valley. All right. Well, thanks so much for joining us. Do come back again. I will. Coming up next, will the U.S. get its own Bitcoin exchange? Reddit is hoping to start breaking some news. And when will drone ships sail the seas? We'll find out. But first, we'd like to thank Lynda.com for sponsoring this episode of TN2. With Lynda.com's easy-to-follow video tutorials, you can learn at your own pace on your own terms from industry experts. With a subscription, members get unlimited access to thousands of online video courses covering many technical skills, creative techniques, business strategies. Maybe you'd like to hone your photography skills or tackle new software, get proficient in web design, even learn to code. At lynda.com, you'll find top quality videos on hundreds of different subjects. You can watch from your computer, your tablet, your mobile device. The instructors are all professionals. They're experts in their field. They're passionate teachers. And each course is structured so you can learn from start to finish or just jump on to find a quick answer. It's $25 a month for access to the entire lynda.com course library. Or for $37.50 a month, you can subscribe to the premium plan, which also includes exercise files. And you can try lynda.com right now with a free seven-day trial. Visit lynda.com slash TN2 to access the entire library. That's over 2,000 courses for free for seven days. L-Y-N-D-A dot com slash TN2. Two. Well, the Bitcoin exchange Mt. Gox has been taken way offline. A short statement on the site blames recent news reports and the potential repercussions on Mt. Gox's operations and the market that led the company to close all transactions. Mt. Gox is rumored to have lost roughly 744,408 bitcoins or about $350 million over a period of years. Bitcoin was trading as low as $450 on the news. It's currently bounced back a bit to about $550 at the time of reporting. In a joint statement released by proprietors of popular exchanges Coinbase, Kraken, Bitstamp, Circle, and BTC China, Mt. Gox was labeled, quote, a bad actor that needed to be weeded out and that it shouldn't reflect on the Bitcoin currency itself. According to a leaked document, supposedly from within Mt. Gox, the company will fire CEO Mark Karpelace and rebrand. Meanwhile, Second Market, which is a company that helps users buy and shell shares of privately owned shares of privately owned companies, is creating a U.S. Bitcoin-focused company, including an exchange. It'll be based in New York, and CEO Barry Silbert says it will launch as a regulated entity. Reddit has started testing a live blogging tool that will allow users to start posting automatically updating streams of information. The new post type is called a live update thread. And in its testing phase, it's helping provide updates on crowdsourced project Twitch Plays Pokemon, perhaps you've heard of it, and on the conflict in the Ukraine. For now, live blogs can only be created by Reddit employees, but the company says the next step is to make them available for everyone once approved by a stream's creator. Streams can only include basic text and linked updates, though Reddit hopes to eventually support richer content like images, videos, Reddit comments, and posts from social media sites. Well, a few days ago, Apple released an iOS update that fixed a web network security hole. And today, OS X Mavericks gets 10.9.2, which doesn't actually list the SSL vulnerability patch among its updates in the download notification, although Apple did confirm to Engadget that it's there. The update also delivers FaceTime audio calling and call waiting to desktop voice chats. And here's some good news for anyone who's been harassed via iMessage. The chat protocol now allows you to block someone from sending you messages altogether. OS 10.9.2 also brings some audio, some Safari, and an email bug fix too. All right, finally, Rolls-Royce is designing a cargo ship, but not just any ship, it's a drone ship. The company's Blue Ocean development team has set up a virtual reality prototype at its Norway office that simulates 360-degree views from a vessel's bridge with the hope that captains on land will eventually use similar control centers to command unmanned, crewless ships. Water drones are safer, they're cheaper, they're less polluting for the $375 billion shipping industry that carries 90% of world trade. That's according to Rolls-Royce. And the company hopes that they could be deployed in regions like the Baltic Sea within a decade.
That is it for this edition of Tech News Tonight. Subscribe to the show at twit.tv slash tn2. Write us at tn2 at twit.tv. Our next newscast is tomorrow at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. Until then, I'm Sarah Lane, and thanks for watching. Bandwidth for Tech News Tonight is brought to you by cashfly.com.